section 5.4, um, example 3. So before we do the last example, between law of sines and cosines, and really right triangles too, an important, important first step for solving triangles is really determining which approach and formulas we should use. Um, plugging into formulas is great, but if we're plugging into the wrong formulas, we're wasting our time, we're probably not able to solve them, or it's taking us on crazy paths. So really step one is identifying what we have. So let's go back to what we started with in the early sections. If you have a right triangle, then we just want to use the basic definition of sine cosine tangent and the Pythagorean theorem. So that would be our so ka toa. Sine is opposite hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent hypotenuse, tangent is opposite adjacent, or even the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is c squared. So I think we're pretty good with right triangles by now, hopefully. We've gotten a lot more practice with those at least. Um, but if you have an oblique triangle, any triangle that's not right, that's where things start to get confusing. So it depends on what information is given. So anytime we have two angles and a side, but really having two angles is really what helps this, but you do need the side as well, we can use the law of sines. So that can be side angle angle or angle side angle. So side angle angle means we have a side angle angle, or we can have angle side angle and the rest is unknown. But either way, the law of sines will solve this. Because we know two out of the three angles, we technically know all three angles because the third angle is just 180 minus the two angles. So there are no issues with supplements. We know enough. Um, the ambiguous case, though, is when we have two sides and an angle opposite. So that means we have, if we think about A, B, C, we have angle A and maybe this side and the opposite side. And the issue is, is we don't know if that opposite side is long enough to make it or not. Or maybe it's so long, right, it can make two triangles. Um, but we'll use law of signs and make sure we check the supplement in that ambiguous case. So if we don't identify which type we're in, we might forget to do this. And we don't have to do it every time. So that's another reason why it's good to know which case we're in. Um, when we have all three sides, Law of sines does not work. You can try it, but you need at least one angle to do law of sines. So we'll use law of cosines. And then if we know two sides and the included angle, so that's different than this one. That means we know two sides and we know the angle in between. Um, law of sines doesn't quite work here, um, but law of cosines will work. So let's identify which type to use so that we don't waste our time and we don't solve unsolvable equations or get those weird supplement issues that I talked about. So in example three, what information is given and then what method should you use? So in ex example A, we have side B, because it's opposite angle B is seven. Angle C is 53. And angle B is 44. So we have two angles and a side. So we have angle, angle, side. You could also interpret it backwards, side, angle, angle. That's where the abbreviations are coming from, like kind of the order that I read it in. And if you look back, we have two angles and a side, so we can use law of sines. No issues, this is not the ambiguous case. Nice and easy version of law of sines. How about part B? Part B. Um, we have different letters, but that's okay. Angles E, D, and F. Angle D is given at 99. Um, side F, opposite of F, would be 11. And side E, because it's opposite E, would also be 11. So in this case, we know side, angle, side. We know the included angle. So let's see. That was... Law of cosines. And you can try to use law of sines. It's not going to work. So I'm saving you the trouble of making mistakes and using the wrong method. So use law of cosines. So I'm giving you the tools so you can do this more efficiently. All right, we have a couple more. Part C. I have side C is 16, because that's opposite angle C. Angle B is 105, and angle, and side A is 25. So this looks like side, angle, side again. 
So we use law of cosines. All right, what about D? I see that B is 13, because that's opposite B. A is 9, because it's opposite angle A. And then angle C is something special. What is it? It's a right triangle, so we shouldn't be using law of sines or cosines. So use those old methods, like sine, cosine, A squared, plus B squared, is C squared, right? Any of those. All right, in our final example, we know angle B is 30. We also know the side B is 30, because it's 5, sorry, because that's opposite the angle. And we know C is 8, the side C. So we have side, side, angle. Side, side, angle, or angle, side, side. That helps me remember that this is the ambiguous case because it's ASS. And that's the worst case of them all. <laughs> So this is law of sines, ambiguous case. So that means you're going to solve it using the law of sines, but then you need to check the supplement. So you have that extra step. And why are we checking that supplement? Because it's possible 5 could be here, or 5 could also be there. And then we have two possible triangles. Because there are two triangles where 5 would work. And there's two different angles that make that work and they're supplements of each other. So please, before you do any problems in these two sections, stop and think, what method am I using and why? Don't just use a method. That's, um, you're going to struggle if you just automatically use a method and don't decide why. So step one is, what information do I have and what method am I using?